Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the St. James Pentecostal Church Worship Service. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us this day. We are glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we may be congregating virtually, but we are congregating nonetheless. And we are thankful to God for the opportunity to congregate in this way. So bless one another. Say good morning. Great to see you. Great to be in church with you today. I want to invite you to bow your heads as we open up in prayer. Hallelujah. Heavenly God and Father, we bless you this morning. God, we give you praise. You are good. You are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We lift your name on high today, holy God. Beside you, there is none other. You are the only wise God, the true and the living God. He who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Father, we thank thank you for being with us today we thank you for the opportunity to gather in this way in your name we pray that you take full control holy ghost we depend upon you to take full control of this service intervene as you see fit in the mighty name of Jesus that your will and your plans and your purpose will be accomplished today in the name of Jesus. God touch every minister who will be participating in the ministry this morning. Touch every piece of equipment, every auxiliary item that will treat with how it is the ministry is communicated that oh god even the internet service got every part of it that it will work for your honor and for your glory father we take authority over everything every spirit device plan and the wicked enemy that will war against this work today in the name of jesus we say let god arise and let the enemy be scattered in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, for doing this awesome work. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we want to invite the worship minister. So I encourage you to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We welcome Sister Myrtle this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. We worship you. We bless your name. We magnify you, O God. Your word said from the rising of the sun down to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised, Father. So we're here to praise you this morning. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same the name of the Lord is to be praised praise Going down of the same, the 
name of the Lord is to be praised. The name of the Lord, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Father, we worship you. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. For you are great. And you are greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father, for who you are. Hallelujah. For you are God. And beside you there is no other. Hallelujah. We worship your name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. We worship you, Father. We bless you. We magnify you. We exalt your precious and your holy name. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. Oh, most excellent one. We adore you this morning. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name. Greatly to be praised. 
Hallelujah, God, we bless your name. Hallelujah, God. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We want to thank God today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is also Father's Day, so we want to stop and bless the fathers today. First, we want to bless our Heavenly Father. He is good. He is steadfast, steadfast in His love, steadfast in His mercy. So we bless the ultimate Father this morning. Happy Father's Day, Daddy God. We also want to just to take time out and just honor our spiritual father, Reverend Godfrey Jilks. He has been a good pastor, a 
good spiritual father to us. So Reverend Jokes, we love you and we celebrate you. So, so love him up in the messaging and, and send him messages of love and honor. And overall, we want to bless all the fathers and the men in our midst. Hallelujah. God has blessed us with some good men. And so we want to honor them and celebrate them today on this Father's Day. So from us at the St. James Pentecostal Church, we are saying Happy Father's Day to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you know, when it comes to Father's Day in our assembly, the men generally sit down, apparently except for Robert, and, and the women take over the ministry. And so we are here this morning to, to do ministry uh, just so that the, the men... And the fathers can, can rest a bit, um, especially our spiritual father, Reverend Jilks. So, today make sure and vibes up the fathers, make sure and love them up, make sure and honor them. It's not easy doing what it is they have to do. And sometimes as women, even as children, we take it for granted. But it's a lot of weight to, to be a man in today's society. So we want to take the position of support. We want to cheer them on. We want to encourage them. We want to speak words of life to them. Yes, God gave women a unique ability in our tongue. We can break down a man with one word. But trust me, in the same way, we can build him up. So let us use the power that God has given us as women to build up our men. Hallelujah. 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 So today, we want to go right into the word. Now is a good time, if it is it didn't do it before, to share the live, to start a watch party. Make sure and like and subscribe to our pages on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube to ensure that you are notified whenever we post anything. So, into the word of the Lord today. Today is Father's Day and we want to focus on God and the fatherhood of God. So, we want to read from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8. It's a favorite chapter of mine. This chapter is a loaded chapter with, oh, it's a love chapter. And um, we just want to read just a few verses out of Romans chapter 8. I encourage every believer to read you should be reading the entire bible okay let me start there but take time to read romans chapter 8 and meditate on it chew on it you know extract the life that is in that chapter so you're reading romans chapter 8 and we're going to read from verse 14 romans chapter 8 reading from verse 14 and it reads for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Hallelujah. Heavenly God and Father, we thank you for your word. God, we love your word. God, we cherish your word. God, we hold it close to us in this walk, in this journey. We do not despise it. We don't try to manipulate it and contort it. But God, we feed ourselves on it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Father, your word is light and it is life. Father, we depend upon your word. So God, minister unto us from your word such as we have need today. You know the needs of each person God each family God remember God even the needs of our countries various countries today in the mighty name of Jesus God we step out of the way that you can take full control we honor you and we bless you in Jesus mighty name and everyone say amen amen so today on this Father's Day, we are going to treat with the fatherhood 
of God, the fatherhood of God. And, and I thought it important to focus there. I mean, the Lord, the Lord dropped it in my heart. But very often, as the scripture says will occur, Jesus is our focus because it is through him we, we, we get eternal life. Jesus is our Savior, our Lord, our King. But I just want us to stop for a moment and consider the Father and to consider the fatherhood of God. And so this scripture that we read here, as I said, Romans chapter 8 is a scripture that every believer should come to know inside out and to digest it and meditate upon it. But the scripture talks about a, this situation that occurred or that occurs when someone gives their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and receives the Spirit of God. There are certain things that happen divinely and legally that brings us into the family of God. And we want to explore that a little bit more. We are not bastards. We are not just people who God is looking over. We are sons and daughters. We are children. And children occupy a particular position in the family. So the first thing in chapter 14, the scripture says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God... They are the sons of God. So we see the whole issue of sonship coming out here. And the scripture says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, those who follow the Spirit of God. You see, who knows the mind of Christ except the Spirit of Christ? So when we follow the Spirit of God, we are following God himself. You cannot be following somebody else and then claim God as your father. It just doesn't work like that. Often when we say that our father pray, everybody embrace it. We are all children of God upon the face of the earth. But there is a family of God that happens judicially. That only occurs through Jesus Christ. So while God created man and created mankind and in that vein he can be said to be the father of all people. There is a particular fatherhood that exists to the believer that is the son and father, daughter and father and it goes beyond just creation. It is when we are born again. We are now birthed into a spiritual family that goes beyond our natural family and our natural history and all the things that we may have done before. We now come into sonship with a new family. Hallelujah. And now we are led by God. Have you ever seen children? They follow their parents around, especially little children, even, even big children. They follow their parents around. And it is that type of scenario Paul is painting here when we are following God around because there is safety by daddy. There is safety by the father. There is protection by the father. There is, pro there is safety and protection by the parent. So the child follows the parent around without, without shame, without, without regard. That is my father. There is ownership by the child of the parent. Sonship sonship those that are led by the spirit they are the sons of god and the sons here we know it refers to the daughters as well and when we speak about a son besides being birthed in you can become a son through adoption and we'll get to that very shortly but a son is someone who shares a similar nature Hallelujah. Of the Father. 
we share the nature of God. When that born again process occurs, there is a pouring out, like an extracting out of the old nature and a putting in of a new nature because now we start to look and sound and talk like our God because we are led by Him and that's how they will know that we are His sons. Hallelujah! There is a resemblance. There is a likeness. There is an attitude that resembles our Father. That's how we know who we belong to. Sometimes you can see our Father and tell His children. People ought to see us and know who our father is because our nature is like him our likeness is like him we operate like him we speak like him we drip and are drenched in his nature because we are sons we are children let me use that word for those who might find sons harsh for the women we are his children children have a particular privilege that visitors do not in fact in fact when you look at extended families you're going to find that while there is love for everybody the people who live in the house has a greater right even if a cousin is visiting the children still have a greater right in the house, freedom and liberty to operate because they are children, they are sons. And so I want us to see and to recognize and to own our sonship in God because he is father. He is father. He is father. And because we are led by him, because we follow him around, we follow God around. And I want to encourage you to follow God around. But you can't follow whom you don't see. You can't follow whom you don't know. You can't follow whom you don't hear. You can't follow if you don't know where the person is is and some of us are where God was you can't follow somebody if they're no longer there you have to remain on the heels of God follow God around like those little children and sometimes they come and they hold on to your leg like a leg pole let's hold on to God because we are sons that's what we do that's where safety is. That's where protection is. That's where the comfort is. That's where the shade is. Let us abide under the shadow of the Almighty because we are sons. Don't think for a moment. Do not think for a moment that God is a distant God. Do not think for a moment that God is far away. And I want to say this very specifically before I go into my next point. Because of sin, we are fallen as men and women. And sometimes we make a lot of mistakes. And sometimes our parents may have made mistakes. And we use that experience now to be the lens through which we look at everything. And it even impacts our relationship with God. Let me tell you, God is a good father. He's not an abusive father. He's not a delinquent father. He's not an absent father. He's not a silent father. God is a good father, a present father, a loving father, a father that provides. So don't you dare take whatever experience you may have had with a human and put it on your God. I want to encourage you to be delivered, to shake yourself from that and approach God as a true child, as a true son with freedom and liberty. Come boldly before his throne. You are the child of a God that sits on a throne. Hallelujah. He said, come boldly. Why? Because we are sons. Visitors can't come boldly before his throne. Hallelujah. But the sons can come. The children can come. I don't know what you're facing, but go to daddy. You are child. You are son. You are daughter. He will give it unto you. And the scripture says it. Evil men know how to give good gifts to their children when they ask how much more our heavenly father will do to us. 
we are sons. We are sons. When we move on, let's talk a little bit from verse 15. Verse 15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit of adoption that occurs whereby now we cry, Abba, Father. I want to tell you a little bit about adoption. That adoption process is not just a regular process. It is a permanent, a permanent legal process. When someone is adopted into a family, it cannot be reversed. It is as if that person was born into that family. So when it is the scripture says that we do not have the spirit of bondage again to fear that is servanthood hallelujah that is when you have to come and say you are serving master even though he is master but what the text is bringing out beyond being a servant and before being a servant we are sons hallelujah and that sonship occurs through the spirit of adoption a divine legal process that transplants you straight from one family into the next family and it cannot be reversed. You are permanently, you have been permanently grafted into the family of God. That is why we can now cry, Abba, Father. Abba means Daddy. When you look at that in the Greek it speaks to a tender, loving relationship between a child and a father. It's not just when you don't have any relationship with your, with your father, you know. So that's why I say, you see these human relationships that we try to put on God? We need to forget that God is a good God. God is a good father. And when we cry, Abba, Father, it's like we're saying, Daddy God. Because I can tell you this, it's very difficult for a child to call a father's father daddy if there is no relationship. You might get other pronouns, but daddy has a particular connotation. It speaks to a tender relationship. It, it speaks to one of love. We say Papa God. That's what Abba means. Papa God. It speaks to this love, this intimacy in that relationship between child and father where you can go and you can just lie upon his bosom and he wrapped his hands around you, his arm around you because you are his own. There is an ownership and a love that occurs between the two. So this is not a spirit of bondage where God is just enrolling servants to do his bidding. It is an adoption arrangement where he's bringing you into his actual family. You are now part of the family of God. If you go to your spiritual birth paper, you're going to see their mark that your father is God. It goes beyond just this informal um, sorry, this formal, foreign, distant relationship we can oftentimes attribute to God because God is so big and He's so far and He's so majestic and He's so powerful that we, 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 we can't really just go to God and He is all of those things, you know. But He is still Daddy. He is still Daddy. And the awesome thing is, your Daddy is majestic and powerful and almighty. That is the great thing. Thing. Hallelujah! We have a God that is above all other gods, and we have a daddy that is above all other gods. And I want us to understand the fatherhood of God. Hallelujah! 
Hallelujah. And some of us need to break down the walls that prevent us from developing this tender, loving relationship with Daddy God. We experience intimacy with Him and intimacy has nothing to do with sex. Sometimes we pervert words and we pervert understanding. Intimacy just speaks to extreme closeness. That is all that it means. So we want an intimate relationship with our Father. Hallelujah. 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 We are dependent upon him. We honor him. We go to him with love in our eyes and our hearts. When we come before God, we don't just come before a judge. <laughs> when we come before God, we don't just come before a king. When we come before God, we come before daddy. We come before daddy. We come before papa God. Hallelujah. We come before papa God. And when you're coming before papa God, who is also a king, there are things that you can ask him for that the ordinary person cannot ask for. There are things that you can access that the ordinary person cannot access because your daddy is the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because we are children, and because we have been legally been adopted as children, we now have legal rights to what is God's. Hallelujah. We now have legal rights to what is God's. The scripture says, in verse 17, and if you could go from 16, the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. And I will tell you this, you see the spirit of God? The pastor has been sharing on the spirit of God. Do not ever underestimate the work and the power of the spirit of God. Without the spirit of God, many things that are will not be. It is the spirit Spirit himself, himself, that bear witness. He is the one who signed on the adoption paper to say, I have witnessed this adoption and it is true, it is legal, it is binding, it is irrevocable. It is the spirit himself that bears witness to the fact that you and I are children of God. Not just any old children, all of us are children of God, but a legal child. Hallelujah. What does that mean? If at all our sonship is challenged, hear me well, because there are times when Satan will come to you and say things to you to cause you to challenge and to doubt your sonship. If it is you are to go into a court of law, they can bring in the Spirit of God because he is a witness. He heard, he saw, he was there. He can testify that this is a son or a daughter of the Most High God. So when it is Satan wants to come in and to question the fact that you are a son, that you are a daughter because you may have made a mistake, Mistake. It is the Spirit of the Lord that stands up on your behalf and declares that no, this is a daughter, this is a son of God. We thank God for the Spirit of God that ensures that our sonship remains intact. Blessed be the name of the living God. Don't ever underestimate the importance, the work, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so if it is we are children, then we are heirs. We are inheritors. We have things to receive. We have an inheritance. We are heirs of God. We are heirs of our Father. We are heirs of our Father. And I was saying just now that our God is a king. He is the king of kings. He is the king that other kings bow to. He is the king that other gods bow to. He is that kind of king. And if he is our daddy and we are heirs of that father, that God,
God, that king, imagine the extent of our inheritance. The scripture says that we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. And if so be, we suffer with him, we may be also glorified together because Jesus went through a lot while he was on this earth to the point of death by crucifixion. But he suffered for our sake. He was hung upon a tree and made a curse that we might live and have their blessing. And a time comes after you have suffered a while. The scripture says it in Timothy. After you have suffered a while, the Lord will establish you. So when we go through the trials of life, a time comes when God says, Okay now son, okay now daughter, time to be glorified. Time to be glorified. This inheritance has so many layers. But one of the key ones is that of eternal life. That of eternal life, everlasting life, not a life like on this earth. This is not our home. We are just travelers through this land because we are heading to a city whose builder and maker is God, our daddy. We are going to his home. A time comes when we have to rest from our labors and so we will go through all kinds of trials, all kinds of tribulations here on earth. But a time comes when we go home to daddy. A time comes when we will rest, when the tears will be dried. A time will come when we will labor no more and we look to that day with hope knowing that our sure inheritance as a son and daughter of God is that of eternal life. Hallelujah! Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we have so many other elements of that inheritance. It's written here in the book. This is a testament. This here it's almost like the contract, the covenant, the agreement of our sonship between us and our daddy. Get to know it. Get to know what your daddy provided for you. What he made available to you in this life and in the life to come. Glory be to Jesus. So today on this Father's Day, we celebrate the fatherhood of God. God is a good father. God is a good father. God is a good father. And I touched on us being sons and the sonship of God. I touched on the fatherhood of God. I touched on us being heirs. But I just want to touch on this last point. That we are the sons and daughters of God. And that makes us brothers. That makes us sisters. That makes us brethren. And you can imagine being in a family and siblings fighting, how does that parent feel? What is the expectation of a parent when they are siblings? That they love each other, that they look out for each other, that they support each other, that they protect each other, that they be there for one another. That is the expectation. And so because we are brothers, because we are sisters in the Lord, joined by the blood of Jesus, all adopted into this family, all witnessed by the Spirit of God, we have to be brethren indeed. We have to be brothers. We have to be our brother's keeper. We have to be our sister's keeper. We have to be there for one another. We have to protect each other. We have to lift up each other. We have to cover each other. We have to counsel and support each other. So you see when it is that is rising up within us to pull down, to tear down, to rough up, to do all kinds of things, we are moving against the nature of God. Remember we are being led by the Spirit of God because we are all sons of God. We need to be led indeed. We need to be brothers. We need not grieve God's heart. We need to treat each other well. We need to love each other as brethren, as brothers, as people who are part of this singular household, this singular family. We 
are in the same family. How can I hate you? And that's what the scripture said. If you hate your brother, you're a liar. You can't say you hate your murderer. You cannot say you love God, but you hate your brother. It is not possible. So if you, if it is you find yourself in a place where you may be harboring hate or a strong dislike for any of your brothers in the Lord, you need to repent and ask God for deliverance because that is not the design of God. The design of God is that we be a family indeed. We support each other. We love each other. We look out for each other because we are part of one family. One family. The brotherhood. It's a divine brotherhood. Hallelujah. It is a divine brotherhood. We are all part of this great family of God. And we don't take it for granted. Remember, when you desire grace, your brother needs grace also. When you need mercy, your brother needs mercy also. Be gracious and merciful unto each other because we are all part of the family of God. And we all have one father. We all have one father, one daddy, one God, all of us. And we bless God for that. Even as I come to a close, I just want to encourage our fathers. I want to encourage our fathers to pattern yourself after our heavenly father and we see in our world where fathers are absent and some of them when they're not absent they're silent they are not ensuring that their children are led by them they are not giving their children anything to follow their children have nothing to to, 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 um, to pattern themselves after. And if the children pattern themselves after it, the children would end up in trouble. So I'm encouraging us fathers, I'm encouraging the fathers, not us, I'm encouraging the fathers to show up. Show up as a father. Show up as Abba. Show up as Daddy. Show up in the, with the intent to lead. Show up with the intent to influence. And I'll tell you something about leadership, which also happens in families. Influence happens willingly. The other person willingly follows, willingly patterns themselves after. So you could scream and, 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 and bawl and beat and do all kinds of things and you still will not get the result that you're looking for because you're looking for influence. You're looking to lead the child. So I want to encourage you, fathers, regardless of whether you live with your child or not, show up as a father. I want to encourage the woman to support that effort. Support the effort. Don't, don't prevent them. Don't, don't be a hindrance. Don't be an obstacle. And sometimes we think that fathers, because they don't meet a particular standard, we keep the children away. But I want to encourage you to ensure that relationship develops. I want to encourage you to support any efforts. Remember, again, we are fallen man, so people are not perfect. You are not perfect. The father is not perfect. But the children need their father. Fathers, the children need their imperfect fathers. They need them. It is better for the children that the fathers are in their lives. I want to encourage those who may not be biological fathers to show up for a child. Because even though I'm saying what I'm saying, some children still have nobody to show up for them. Show up because you have it with in you to lead, you have it within you to give life. Remember, Father is source that he who gives life show up, show up as daddy for a child. Show up, and the child may always be a small child, it may be a teenager, it may be a young adult. Show up, show up to guide, show up to lead, show up to present a pattern, a model, an example. Our children need that. And lastly, I want to say to our children. Receive our fathers. 
even if they may have been absent, even if they may have been silent, even if they may not be who we expect them to be or who we prefer them to be, and all of that, receive them. Receive them with love. Receive them with forgiveness. Receive them with open arms. And even those who may be at home, sometimes your father is there. And as I said, he's silent. He's absent, though he's present. Receive your father. I pray, God, for reconciled relationships. Hallelujah. I pray, God, for reconciled relationships in the homes. That fathers will be reconciled unto children and children to fathers. That God, men will show up for our young people. They will show up for our children. That they will be fathers indeed. That this generation will not be one that is fatherless. That, oh God, there are so many men today and so many good men that sometimes they small number of bad could kind of overshadow the good but father today we want to recognize the good men the willing men who are present that God you would empower them and strengthen them you would drop people in their hearts to go and talk to and interact with oh God you're going to give the fathers boldness to show up for their children despite the history despite broken relationships that fathers are going to make calls today and children will make calls today and there will be reconciliation in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I pray even for the believers that we too will be reconciled in a deeper way to our God. He wouldn't just be God, but we wouldn't come to know him as daddy. That love and tender relationship will become the relationship that we have with him. We will go to him as a child goes to a parent just to talk, just to cuddle, just to, just to, sometimes there's nothing in particular you're coming for, but just for relationship. That father, we're going to stop going to God only when we need something but we are going to be determined to develop relationship with him father God daddy God that oh God more and more believers will come to see the daddy in God and treat him as such and interact with him as such in the mighty name of Jesus God and I thank you God, and I want to give an opportunity to those who may not even know God as Father. You may think or may be dulled into thinking that everybody on the earth is God's children and there is a measure of that through creation. But this fatherhood and sonship I spoke about today is not everybody. You have to be adopted in. You have to be born again into the family of God. And so I want to give anyone that opportunity to say yes I want to be a part of God's family I want that adoption I want to enter in I want to be born again and that occurs through Jesus Christ and him and him alone there is no other way to get to the father but through Jesus and so when you receive him as Lord as Savior, he who died on the cross for our sins and was rose again that we might be saved. If you accept him as your Lord and personal Savior, you can be grafted into the family of God, just as many of others have been already. So I want to encourage you, if that is you, lift your hands, bow your head, wherever you may be. I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray for you this morning, and after I've prayed, I want you to send a message, send a direct message, send a, a um, call the office, send an email and let us know that you have made that decision so we can then support you into that transition and this new part of your life. Heavenly God and Father, I thank you for every person who may have lifted their hands or indicated that they want to say yes to you. They want to be a part of your family indeed. They want you to be their daddy as well. That God, you would receive them to yourself, oh Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, even as they confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, God, you will receive them. Father, and I thank you 
thank you, thank you for doing this awesome work. Father, I pray that you walk with them. You know, the things are different now. Churches are closed as they were. But Father, I pray that an arrangement will be in place to support them into this decision that they too can experience you in your fullness. But we thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, Amen. And amen, amen, amen. The fatherhood of 